And I was never much of a student. I wasn't a very good student in terms of academics. And um, I'll never forget, I came home really excited one day because they were doing a school musical and it was actually about the life and the work of Martin Luther King Jr. at nine years of age in Cork in 1985. And um, I, got, I got a part in the play. I got to sing and dance. And um, I got to learn all about what was happening in the deep south in America and the... Uh, you know, in the early part of the 20th century through the 60s and 70s, and sure, we're still dealing with it today, and um, and how that kind of related to civil rights in the north of Ireland, and um, all of a sudden, learning kind of became easier for me. You know, I kind of everything, everything through theatre seemed to just make sense, whether it was counting out the beats and rhythms of music that kind of helped me in math. Um, obviously, a lot of inspiration for a lot of theatre comes from history and current affairs so all of a sudden it just kind of opened up a world for me yeah so that's exactly where it came from <laughs> but it's a, big, it's a big step to make your passion or your hobby become your profession was yeah. there when did you make that call and then how did you make it um it was uh it's i'm not sure if um i think i i think for a lot of actors we don't start looking at our careers until much later on you know very often when you're in the moment you're in the middle of it you're you know you're juggling uh, working in a bar and you're juggling getting to rehearsals and um, for me I made the first decision when I did my leave insert I decided I just wanted to study performing arts it's something that I just had a passion for and um, I had worked at the Cork Opera House all through my teenage years so I got a good little foundation there and I went to school in Inchicore in Dublin and in Cork at the Firk and Crane Theatre and uh, I did like three or four years studying performing arts and theater and all that. And um, and I worked in bars at the same time. Then when I came to New York in 2000, got a job in a bar here on the Upper East Side, which I ended up owning eventually. But all throughout that time, I was kind of moonlighting. I was kind of moonlighting with the acting as well and got a couple of really nice breaks with the Irish rep here in New York. So uh, I think being in New York, I mean, obviously the theater scene here is so so famous it's 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 part of the fabric of the city and um, what i found especially amongst them um, especially amongst a lot of all the irish actors that i met here it was just so encouraging that it just became part of what i was doing and that basically led me to 2018 and in 2018 my um, my partner my fiance jessica delucia she is a businesswoman in her own right she has a very successful education company here and um, i kind of came to a crossroads with the bar business i kind of got to a point where do I want to spend the next 20, 30 years doing this or should I pursue my passion? And Jessica was like, you have a lot of people in your life who encourage you to do what's right, but it doesn't really have any impact in them. And um, Jessica, who was my partner, like she was like, listen, you got to follow your passion. Yeah, so okay. she really, she told me to. And um, yeah, the beginning of 2018 was great. I, I did, a, I worked it with Origin Theatre Company here quite a lot with their first Irish festival. And um I hadn't been on stage in about two or three years, but in the meantime, I was still uh, working on Red Dead Redemption 2, that video game with Rockstar playing Sean McGuire. So that kept the irons in the fire, as it is. And um, in 2018, yeah, I did a play with a very good friend of mine here, Tim Ruddy, who was a um, really great actor here in New York and well-known on television back in Ireland. And um, it just things just started kind of happening um, for the last two years. Um, I went theater is um, like I said earlier, theater is it's, it can be helpful for people in many ways. And a lot of people here in New York for a lot of, especially older people in New York, you know, it's, it's their only kind of real social lifeline. So what the Irish rep kind of did there is they, they really did a, a wonderful thing by pivoting and moving forward. One quick thing, the, the, the game, the gaming voiceovers. Um, yeah. Have you ever been taken aback by how big that industry really is? Oh, it's 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 unbelievable. Um, I'll point out right away uh, the work that I did on it was called performance capture, where it's your voice and like what you see on the screen is is me. Like when I'm getting hit in the face, we worked on all that. And um, when I'm you know drinking at a campfire, that's me sitting around a campfire in the funny scuba suit with the little dots on it. Um, it was uh, it's 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 just mind blowing. I knew who Rockstar was when I got the part. Uh, I didn't know what the scope of it was. I didn't know what the, what the game was at the time when I first went in. 
but it's um yeah it's it's a cultural phenomenon and it's um it's quite beautiful in a way and i actually i compare it i consider it to be a lot closer to actual theater than television or film it's um it it in terms of working on it it draws on so much imagination and um it's just i think for people who play the games a lot of people i think i'm obviously gaming is you know it's the realm of a lot of uh, of i suppose younger people um although i do enjoy the retro video games myself but um i think there's a similar experience there in terms of you actually are involved you're not just a passive kind of passenger as you are very often with television and film and um, with the video games you're kind of you're involved you're invested in the same way that uh you are when you go to the theater and the experience the experience of sitting in an audience as an audience member in a theater is very personal and it's colored by what went on that day in your life and it's the same with these video games you know it's what the gamer decides to do and how they feel about what they're involved in is very much colored by their situation and everything else so the community of fans and supporters are so um they're just so they're so supportive but they're also so creative and that's the other wonderful thing I've noticed in COVID is a lot of the the fandom has really rallied and started their own blogs and started their own podcasts. And um, in fact, I'm actually going to be speaking on one today called Around the Campfire with three amazing women who became friends through the online version of Red Dead Redemption 2. And now they've got this podcast going where they're just they're sharing their voices with the world and speaking to people about something that they love and that brought them together. And it's... It's, it feels good to be a part of something like that, you know. Definitely. What's what's the dream? What's 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 within sight? What would you love to achieve in the next year, eighteen months, two years? In the next year or next eighteen months, I just hope to survive. Um, actually, going back to the reflection part of everything, um, I've been actually going back to my days of studying theatre. I've been going back to a lot of the notes I took when I was in college. The handwriting is fairly in- uh, illegible, <laughs> but um, I've been kind of just thinking an awful lot about how theatre can actually impact and help people in a broader sense. Uh, here in America, it's it's very commercial. You know, it's, it's all about paying the rent and making some money. But um, I do I do believe that theatre is a practice, um, like the way yoga is. People practice yoga, you know, to to kind of broaden broaden themselves internally and externally. For me. Uh, that's kind of how I've always approached theatre is trying to discover like what's going on between the lines and using a lot of those kind of techniques I've noticed more and more has helped me in my daily life and what I've been doing for the last couple of weeks last couple of months has been taking a lot of notes about a lot of my experiences in the rehearsal rooms that I've worked in and situations plays that I've worked on and just trying to kind of figure out how I can maybe impart that to people who need it um, whether it's people in business whether it's students uh, you know the lessons I've learned in theatre is uh, like you're always on stage and I've been to weddings where I've walked away and the best man probably could have you know used a couple of pointers but I wouldn't be so arrogant as to take someone aside but I do think that there's ways that um, the practice of theatre can actually help people um, and not just be like a means for entertainment or a means for you know making money, I guess. Uh, so that's something I'm kind of focusing on right now with a lot of the reflection that's going on. And also it's kind of inspired by Jessica's business and how she kind of has, has kind of engineered her passion for education to actually kind of helping people um, with her company, which is Keys to Literacy and Learning here in New York. That's kind of, I think, where I'm going right now, especially seeing as, you know, a lot of stuff is kind of, it's shut down. <laughs> 